Perfect. So um, welcome to our watercolor painting class tonight. Um, before I turn it over to Victoria, just have a couple of uh, quick announcements of some things happening at the library. Uh, we have a, a plant sale that the Garden Club is um, holding on Saturday, May 20th at 8.30 in the morning. So for all you gardeners out there, um, stop in early, I would say closer to 8.30 uh, if you want to check out the selection of plants that they are going to be selling at really good prices. Um, and then on Wednesday, May 24th at seven o'clock, actually we'll have um, a bagpiper named Kevin Chapman who will be um, coming to the library for a program. And that's going to take place on, I, I don't know if I just said this, May 24th at seven o'clock. It's, it's an, actually, it's an in-person program. So it'll be nice to see um, uh, people back in our meeting room. It's been closed for a few months um, while we we're doing some remodeling. So uh, so that'll be a real treat. Again, uh, Wednesday, May 24th, seven o'clock. Um, it's Kevin Chapman. He's going to be doing a program on the myths and history of the great Highland bagpipes. So it's sure to be a fun, a fun evening. I think that's all I have as far as announcements. Hopefully everyone stopped by the library within the last week to pick up supplies. Uh, all the supplies were at the information desk, so have, hopefully you all have what you need. Um, and this is a very fun and interactive program with Victoria tonight. So um, if you have questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Um, we, will, we are recording tonight's session, so it will be on our YouTube channel. Uh, sometime within the next couple of days. So if you have to skip out early or want to repeat the session tonight, um, you can do that um, in the next few days. I think that's all I have as far as um, announcements. Welcome to uh, Victoria. She has done a handful of these um, painting classes for us throughout um, COVID and this past year. She also does quite a bit for our children's department too. So it's um, a real treat to, to have her back. She's gonna be doing another painting class for us this summer as we celebrate the library's uh, 50th anniversary. And I believe that workshop might be in July. I'm not sure, Victoria, you might remember the date, but <laughs> it's just not off the top of my head. <laughs> June or July. Um, so thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Victoria, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, awesome. Um, so I'm just gonna pop really quick on the screen here, our reference photo, so you can take a peek. Uh, we've got some lovely irises that we're gonna paint tonight. Uh, if you wanted to kind of take some artistic license and make them a little more pinkish or any other color you think would work really well, you absolutely can. Can we take uh, a picture of that? Can we take a picture? Um, yeah, you can take a picture really quick. I can also throw this on the screen if anybody needs to see it. Um, I'll just give you a second there if you want to take a picture of your computer or a screenshot if you're on your iPad or something. Victoria, did you see that question about the green? I'm sure you're gonna be mixing colors, right? In order I did to not see that question. Let me take a peek here. Uh, okay, um, if you did not get green, I'm pretty sure, I thought we had put green in the kit, but if it's not there, I can help you mix it. As long as you have yellow and blue, we'll be just fine. Um, so, uh, we will go ahead and get started. And if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to ask. Um, and grab your pencils and erasers. And we're going to 
start our drawing here. Um, I'm going to have my paper be vertical, so up and down. And to get this started, I want to do the stems here. And now I'm going to draw darker on my paper so that you can see on your screens, but you can draw lighter so that you can um, erase it better if you need to. So I'm starting out with this long stem. It's a little more towards the right than in the middle of my paper. And I am going up my paper a little bit more than halfway, a little bit more than halfway. So I still have a nice amount of room from where that little line is ending. And when you are satisfied with the length of that line, uh, come on in and you can either do your next line to the right or to the left depending on if you think you went a little too far right with that first line or a little too far left. I'm choosing to do my second line on the right because I think that that would look best. And again, this is just the other part of the stem here. And then when you have that down, if you could come a little to the left and add in a much smaller stem, that would be great. All right, um, does anyone need a minute before I keep going? Um, so let's One go credit card. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the top of this stem here where we did the first one. And I want you to come above it and draw a line. So I have a nice amount of room there. And from that line, we are gonna do our first petal. I am starting to curve it. And then curve it again. So now it's kind of like a, an elongated S shape. And then coming back up towards the top there and closing that off. And you can uh, tweak it if you need to. Um, if you need to erase any of the stem that might still be hiding under there, you can. And from that, we can draw a nice orb. Now, 
and you can see I still have a little bit of room left at the top. If you've got a little more room than me, that's fine. Just as long as you didn't get cut off. And then towards this side, we can come on in and do a long, thin petal shape. If you need to tweak anything at any point, please always feel free to do that. And I'd like us to come back up to that big top part. And we're going to split this into three sections. So I'm starting towards the left. And I definitely, at this very moment, this right side is way bigger than what I have cut off over here. And then I can get that right side to be split yet again. And I know that we did it as a big um, orb shape. So I'm just zooming down here so you can see what I'm going to do. I'd like us to come down a little bit so that we can make it appear that both of these petals that we just put in are going to be taller than the middle. So I'm going to then erase the top little line that I no longer need. So now we've got some layers to it, some nice elevation of that area. Um, and just take a second to make sure that you don't have any extra lines hanging around that you don't need. Um, if we could come on down here and pop in a kind of long line that then curves to come back. It definitely did end a little bit close to my petal there. If yours is slightly different, that is fine. And then I would like us to bring a V into it. And then split that down to make it more of a Y. And then we're almost done with our drawing. We just need to draw this um, last flower. Does anyone need me to wait a minute before I keep going? So coming on down here, uh, if you could start where your stem is ending and come over to the side of it a little bit to do a little V.
and then we will extend that line from that V and curve it. Same thing on the right side. Uh, if you need to extend any line for that stem, you can. And take a second really quick. And you should have still a small gap in between on that petal. Does anyone need a second? Okay. Um, in that small gap, we can come on up and start to do another elongated petal. Uh, I underestimated how tall it needed to be on that first curve. So it does come up quite close actually to uh, this petal from the first one. Um, if yours is slightly different, that's fine. And bring that on down. Pop in two more on both sides of that. My left petal here is definitely wider. And then two more petals and we are done with our drawing. Um, the first of those two petals over here, if it does cross over your stem, that is fine, but you wanna make it look pretty deliberate. So you can see I've taken my point all the way to go across it. Um, you could also stop it in the middle. That would be a little bit harder to paint around, but an option. And if it's maybe just really far away and you can't extend it, that's fine. The only thing I wanted to make sure of was that it, your little uh, petal point didn't just stop where the stem started because that would look a little strange. So just as long as it looks deliberate where you're ending it, that's all you need. And don't forget to potentially erase any extra lines. And then the last petal, I'm starting by cutting into that first one we did. It's slight, but you can definitely see that I need to erase a little bit now. And I am continuing that bump, a little bit wiggly, which is fine. And then bring in that back on up, which can be way more straight. And that's it. That's all we had to draw. Um, take a minute to just examine your drawing one more time. Make sure that there's not anything you need to erase.
And with that, we are pretty good to go. Um, in your palette, if you picked up your supply kit from the library, you should see a nice array of colors. Uh, if anybody doesn't have green, like somebody had mentioned, I will help you mix that when we get to it, but we won't need to do that for a little while. Um, but you should have a yellow, um, a red, a pink, and let me just point something out real quick. If you're not sure which one is the red and which one's a little more pink, uh, you can just take a little bit of water on your brush and you should be able to see much better. Uh, my red over here, you can see it is quite red. And then when I look at my pink, it is not as deep of a crimson color definitely looks more pink. Um, I don't have a pink. Hmm. Um, does anybody else not have a pink? Okay. Um, hmm. If you don't have a pink, you can use the red. Um, if you look, uh, okay. Uh, if you look at the red, um, if you put it, I'll put it really lightly on a little scrap piece of paper, it can come across very much as a light pink. That can be very blushy and that will work just fine. Well, is it sort of a, I don't know if this is a pink, was there sort of an orangey color? Maybe this is supposed to be a pink. Sort of an, I have an orangey color. I have, an, I have an orangey color as well. Interesting. Yeah, but I don't have a pink. So okay. not a problem. Um, so that orangey color, does it look a little more on the red side? Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, that is going to work just fine. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened with that, but we will be all right because this is mainly a blue purple situation um you should have some a nice dark blue in your palette though for sure um let me just squeeze a little bit of that into mine and i'm going to show you it looks very dark it almost is going to look like a black squeeze a little bit of that in there so you can see how dark that is Right there, like it said, it almost looks black. Um, if you're not sure, again, just take a little bit of water and uh, give it a whirl. Is anyone having trouble finding their, their dark blue? Okay, I think we're good on the dark blue then. All right, and one last color question. Does, uh, do you have a light blue that looks extremely light? Like you look at it and you're like, oh, that's a nice sky color blue. Uh, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so the dark blue is called indigo and the light blue is cerulean, um, but I'll just, I'll just say light blue and dark blue. Uh, and we're gonna use both of them. And use both of them. Oh, that's fun. So if you ever get anything unwanted on your paper, a little scrub is all you need there. Rips right off. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so for our blues and uh color mixing, I'd like us to mix a little bit of a purplish color. Uh, with your dark blue and your red color, if you can 
bring a little bit of that into your either middle or if you wanted to use a uh, area maybe in the palette that is empty, an empty well, you can do that as, uh, as well. And see, I've got a little bit of blue over here already. Uh, bring a little bit of your dark blue on over. Victoria, I have a purple. Oh, fun. Yeah, so I, I have a purple as, well. as I do as well. Awesome. Never mind then. But if anybody did need to know how to do it, uh, red and blue is is what you need. Then I will stop our color mixing there. Thank you for telling me. Uh, is it a nice dark purple? Um, so like a regular royal, sort of a royal purple. Like that? It's not that dark. But something along these lines will be perfect, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, then we will save our color mixing then for um, making green. And if you did bring blue somewhere before you realized that you had it, well, we'll need that to mix the green so it's not gone to waste at all. All right. Uh, so we are going to primarily paint in the blues and purples right now. Uh, if you can take your brush and dip it into some water uh, and come on to the top here and start to put that water down. We are doing a technique called wet on wet, which just means that we are getting our, uh, our paper wet. And I can see mine is a little bit, uh, got a little bit of blue in it, but that's fine. It was just left over on my brush from mixing. Um, I want you to take your red, or if you did have a more pink color, your pink, but whichever one you've got, and pop that on in. This is a little bit of my red. Um, Pop that on in here. And you can see just by barely touching it, it's spread on its own. That's what the wet on wet technique does. It just makes the color bloom. Uh, and it's it's really quite lovely. And once you have that red down, if you can dip into your dark blue, your indigo, and pop that on in here around where you've put your reddish pink. Would be great. And you can see I still have plenty of my red showing through. That's what we want. And lastly, you can take your purple and throw that in here as well. Um, I'm gonna leave it alone like, like this, let it dry. Um, the less that we mess with it, the more distinct that the colors are just gonna lay on top of themselves. Um, then we can't paint right next to it just yet because if we do, it will bleed and we don't want that. Um, so we can jump over to this petal. And get some water on it.
and we can start on in with our light blue. So the one that looks like the color of the sky and put that on down at the bottom. And then go on and barely touch your pinkish red, red, um, and throw that on in here. And if you don't have pinkish red, what should you use? Um, whatever red you've got. I, I just said pinkish red in case anybody did have a pink. Um, but you did say that you had a, a nice looking red. Yes, I have a red, yes. Perfect. And so I'm just gonna let that sit in the middle like we did with the first one. And then I'm gonna grab my light blue again and put that at the top. So we've got light blue, maybe a little bit of space in between uh, red and then more light blue. And before that dries out, if you could grab a little bit of your purple and throw that in here. You need to blend it. You can always come back and add maybe more of the light blue um, or even some of your red. I'm just going to let this stay like this and not touch it anymore. Anyone need another moment on either of those petals before I keep going? Cool. Um, so let's scoot on down to uh, the flower we haven't touched yet. And um, if you can get your brush nice and clean, because I know we've been using blues and, and such. Um, get that nice and clean so that you can come on in and dip into your yellow. And we are gonna do wet on dry this time. So we're not putting water down quite yet. We are just putting the pigment down on the dry paper. Um, of course, my brush is wet because it had to be so I could lift up the pigment, but the paper is what's dry. And come on into the middle of this petal. And throw just a little glob of the yellow in there. And then same thing on this petal. And this petal. And we will give that a chance to dry. And 
and we can scooch on over to this uh, bud that really hasn't unfurled yet. Uh, and we will do the wet on wet method again for that. Uh, so I'm gonna get the yellow off of my brush, make sure it's nice and clean. If you need to dab it on a paper towel, you can. And I'm gonna get this wet. and dip on into my light blue. Maybe a little bit of my red down at the bottom. And then towards the left side here, I'm gonna pop in my purple. And finally, my dark blue, which my dark blue is gonna overlap on all of these colors um, in some way. Wait a minute. Are you saying there was a light blue and a dark blue? Yes, I'm putting the dark blue on right now. Oh, so okay, I guess I didn't have a light blue. I had a cerulean blue. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the cerulean blue, yeah. Okay, are you saying, are, were there two shades of blue that were supposed to be in the kit? No, uh, well, yeah, so it's, the, it's that lighter sky blue, which is cerulean blue. And then that dark blue that almost looks like black, that's indigo. Oh, Those are okay. two blues right. that you should have. Um, okay. And as long as you have a little bit of both on here, you can see my light blue still peeking through. Um, and my uh, indigo is laying just right on top of that. And I'm going to leave that be. Um, does anyone need more time on anything? Um, so I know that we put the yellow down here, but that should be uh, pretty dry considering we did it wet on dry and uh, that it was a really tiny area. So if you can paint the petal above it with some water, and in this petal, it is nice and dark. So I'm gonna be using both blues, both of them, and then the purple. So I like to start out with whatever my lightest color is. And so that would be the, the cerulean blue, the light blue. And I think I'll go with the purple next, just because I feel like it might be slightly lighter than our indigo. And 
and lastly, the indigo. And we can do the same thing for this petal over here. Um, I would like us to throw some of our red in it. I got that petal nice and wet. And a little dot of your red. And then I will take my cerulean blue and throw that up at the top. as well as my dark blue at the bottom, my indigo. Finally, a little bit of purple to just tie it all together. We're going to leave that one alone because everything that it is potentially going to be touching uh, could be wet. So we will move back up to our tallest flower. Um, does anyone need a minute before I keep going? Um, it should be free and clear to start painting uh, in here. So I'd like us to get this whole middle section wet. And all we're going to do is take the light blue, the cerulean, and pop it in a couple places. I want the white of the paper to still be uh, showing through here, so we are not going to cover every inch of this inside section in paint. And one final color is adding a little bit of purple. Again, plenty of white still showing through. If you feel like you've got a whole mess and you don't see any white, uh, you can take a paper towel and dab it down to lift out some of that excess water uh, or uh, paint that might be in the way. And then we should be able to paint this petal because it shouldn't be touching the one we just did. Uh, but if anybody can't paint this petal, please let me know. Okay. 
things were okay. Um, just in case somebody's drawing was a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna get this whole petal wet uh, and use our same um, blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of purple. But up in the center here, I want you to actually pop a little bit of yellow. So like I said, we'll get this wet. Really make sure your brush is nice and clean. I like to dab it on a paper towel before I dip into my yellow. And I'm just gonna give this a little tap, tap, tap right at the top there to gently lay that down. And the rest of your petal should still be white. If it just spread everywhere, like I said before, just give it a nice dab with your paper towel and you can wait a minute. Um, but if you're good to go, if your yellow is contained, you can come on in with your light blue, your cerulean. A little bit of red. It's a little bit a lot. Let's get that out. There we go. And a little bit of purple. It's right at the tip there. And if you wanted to throw a little bit of your indigo, your dark blue anywhere, you could. Just in case you wanted to get all those colors in. And we're gonna jump again this time uh, back down to the lower flower. Um, does anyone need me to wait a second? And we should be able to come on in and paint this middle. Uh, I'd like to do something a little different though. So we're still gonna do wet on wet, but instead of painting this whole petal, I'd like us to stick to the outer edge of it, leaving the middle to be dry. So if I just kind of take this up to the light here, you can see in the middle, it is nice and dry, but on the edge, it is nice and shiny. And again, we'll start with our lightest color, our, our cerulean blue. A little bit of red. Again, trying to keep it more of a light shade. And then lastly, our purple. and indigo.
And if you find that you just have a nice harsh edge, uh, if you clean off your brush and come on in and give it a scrub, that should buff it out very nicely. I'm gonna let that dry. Does anyone need a minute? Um, I'd like to pop back up here. Uh, again, wash your brush and maybe dab it on the paper towel because we're gonna dip into our yellow. And just like we did below, wet on dry, put a nice little splotch of yellow right in the middle of this petal. It should take very little amount of time to dry as it is so tiny. And while that is drying, look back at the flower that we just painted. Um, it should be fine to come in and paint this middle petal because we have that yellow to block the gap there. But is if, that wet or dry? Uh, this is just water. Um, yes, yeah, so wet on wet. Uh, but I was just trying to uh, get some water down to show you um, if it's still wet here, I have a nice little gap and it's not touching it. And you can see that with the shiny of the just plain water. So yes, put your water down. And come on in with your light blue. And we can focus that at the top and bottom. And then coming on in with some purple at the left hand side of that petal. I do want to keep a nice amount of the white of the paper in here again. And maybe just a dab of indigo at the bottom. Letting that dry. Um, the yellow that we put down here should also be dry because it was so tiny, but does anyone need me to wait a minute before I come in and paint this petal? Um, just like we did for this one, how we put the water only at the outer edge. I want to do the same technique for this one. So just get some water on your brush and put it on the outer edge of this petal. And we will come on in with our lightest colors, meaning the little bit of red and blue first. And then we can come on in with our purple.
and indigo. And again, if you don't like the harsh line that maybe you've gotten, you just give it a little scrub with a nice clean brush. Be all set. Last two petals here um, on this, and then we have to do the stem uh, and leaf, and then a little bit of splatter if you want, and potentially some little detailed lines, but we are almost done. Uh, these last two petals will be very quick, and they are on the opposite sides of each other, and they shouldn't be touching anything wet, so we can do one right after the other. Um, in the same technique that we just did by putting that little bit of water down first, I'd like to do that here. And let me just kind of raise this up so you can see. It's really concentrated at the tip down here and above, I'm sorry, following the, the line back up towards the middle of the flower. And I can come on in with my light blue. And I'm going to stick with the, the two blues and the purple for this. Bring a little bit of the purple. And the indigo. And if you don't like any harsh edge, buff it out with a little bit of a clean uh, brush. And this last petal, you can get water over everything except the yellow. If you can draw a circle around that yellow that's sitting in there uh, with the water and get the rest of the petal wet. Come on in, same thing, the two blues and the purple. And then we can let that be. All right. Um, if your water, like mine, is extremely blue purple, if you want to dump that really quick, you can, um, so that we can have a nice clean slate for mixing our green. And just move your painting out of the way for right now so that you don't accidentally mix on top of it. All right. 
Um, so I had brought over a little bit of blue before when I thought we had to mix purple. Um, so if you also did that, you can work some yellow right on into it. If you didn't, I would recommend starting first with your yellow, bringing it over to a nice clean mixing spot. Just so that it doesn't get too contaminated. And slowly integrate your blue into it. So um, the blue is the indigo, so the dark blue, that's the one you want to be using to make this green. And just make sure that you make enough of it so that you don't have to uh, quickly make more later. And so that's my final green product. And once you have enough of that, you can get your brush uh, and dip it into the water and start putting water down on your stem. So because my petal actually breaks it up right here, uh, I'm only going to go to that petal, which should be dry. And then I'm going to dip on into my green and pop it on in. If you feel like it needs to be darker, you can always tap more of that green in here. We will let that dry. And because I was able to skip a little bit from that petal, I can just continue on down here doing the same thing. Putting my water down first, and then my green. There's one last little stem. Uh, we will wait for the stems to dry, which won't take long before we come in and do the, the leaves surrounding this extra flower bud. Um, but while we are waiting for the stems to dry, we can um, get some indigo on our brush and start doing some wet on dry line work. Um, so when you're doing stuff like this, just remember that once you put it down, um, 
it's really hard to come up, especially working with indigo, which is extremely dark. Uh, so you can always add more. It's a little harder to uh, take it away. Uh, and the quicker you put these lines down, uh, the nicer and more uh, uniform they're going to look. So I did that in the middle here. Um, you can add some more anywhere that you want. You can even come on in and add some purple lines. And if you don't want to do these, you don't have to. It's just a nice little texture. Be careful going close to anything that's wet, particularly the stem. If you want to do some lines that are by the stem, uh, you can just wait until they're dry. As long as you feel confident in the areas you're painting, then that's all that matters. And in my experience, when you first start adding something like this, it kind of looks a little bizarre. But once you uh, add all of them down, it tends to look more uniform. So just kind of trust the process a little bit. Um, if you need to wait to come on in and do the leaf areas right here, you can. Uh, if you feel able to, you can put them in now. Um, it's such a small area. If you want to do wet on dry, you can, uh, especially since it's a color we mixed, it should be pretty wet already. So that should just lay down quite nicely. And since we just painted that, it might not be an option to do it right away. But if you want to get a little definition in between the leaves here, if you want to come in with some indigo, you can. Uh, I would wait till it's nice and dry because mine is spreading, but I wanted to get it down to, to show you what it would look like. A nice little cut in there. All right. And um, lastly, this is completely optional. You can leave your painting the way it is, but if you wanted to get a little bit of movement in it with a nice splatter, uh, that is a, a fun thing to do. It can be a little messy, but it, the watercolor paint comes right off with a little bit of water on a paper towel if you get it over your table. Um, 
if you wanted to do a splatter, I recommend splattering in colors that are in the piece so it looks more cohesive. So you've got your two blues, your purple, maybe a little bit of red, uh, even some yellow. Uh, green would also be fine. Uh, and to do a splatter, you want to make sure your brush is nice and wet and really go around in your palette to get this full of paint. And it's so wet that I would be worried to hang my brush over this uh, because I'm afraid it'll drip. That's how you know you've got it wet enough. I'm really going to zoom out here. Um, and once you have that brush full of uh, water and some paint, you can flick your wrist and just start throwing that on down. Again, completely optional. You can go for more of a simplistic look, but I do like the movement that it gives it. And again, you can always add more. So if you are doing this, kind of give it a, a look-see uh, in between each color choice. And with that, we are all done with our irises. I wanted to mention, um, could everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me turn on my volume. If you would like to share your piece with me, I'd love to post them um, on our Instagram or our Facebook page. So um, if you could email me a picture of your um, art, then I would love to, uh, to share it. So uh, everyone has a my email, and if you have time, send me a photo of, of what you created tonight. It's always kind of fun to see, um, to kind of see what everyone's created. So um, anyhow. <laughs> I have a question. Let's say if you want to try it again, I want to go back and look at the uh, recording. Where can we get another sheet to practice again? Is it possible? That we could pick up a sheet, buy a sheet somewhere. I just I had bought um, a tablet of the um, special paper that Victoria suggested. I'm sure you could pick that up at Michael's, right? Yeah, yeah. You can get a a pad of watercolor paper. Um, uh, the one uh, that we were using is Canson um, XL. Uh, my brand got ripped off of it. Um, but yeah. What was the first name? What was the first word? Hanson or? Uh, Canson with a C. Hanson watercolor paper. I know Michael Michaels also sells a brand called Strathmore. Right. Which is a nice brand. Um, so a, a, either of those would work. The only thing is this, that you just want to make sure you're working on watercolor paper to do this again um, and not like, you know, computer paper. Like, so as long as it's watercolor paper, you can absolutely watch the recording and try the project again. Okay. Is this under what, ELA Library for the YouTube station? Yeah. So if you go to our homepage and scroll down to the very bottom of the page, You'll see several icons for our social media. Um, so I, I'm reading your note, Nancy. I'll, I'll get to you in a second. Um, and one of the icons is for the YouTube channel. So just click on that and it'll take you right to all of our recordings of all of our lectures. Oh, okay. Great. And Na Nancy, I know um, I 
think someone told me today at the information desk, right, that that uh, we ran out of the paper. So if you stop by, um, if you stop by to the information desk tomorrow, I'll make sure that there is paper there for you. Uh, if you don't mind coming by, um, coming by like after 11 tomorrow, um, we'll make sure there's a couple of sheets of that paper there for you. Okay, that'd be great. I just didn't think we received any. And I was like, why does mine just not, it's my paper's all wet and it's like, it's gross. <laughs> Thanks. It doesn't well, work very well. You, you, you're saying you didn't get paper with yours, correct? Is that they didn't give you the envelope? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Yes. They had told me that this morning and I'm like, oh darn, I think we ran out of the envelopes, but, um, but yeah, if you, um, stop by tomorrow, um, then we'll have it there for you. I Thank have a you. quick question about the, um, if you have kind of solid lines and you want to buff them out now they're dry. So can you explain how I can kind of make them a little softer? Yeah, um, you can still come in. Uh, I know we just used a whole bunch of colors. So if you need to change your water, uh, feel free to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of have a harsh line. Hold on. I'm, uh, you can turn your piece if it is more uh, convenient at any point. Um, but I've got a harsh line right there that I'm not particularly fond of. So uh, I'm going to take my brush here and give it a little scrub just with a little bit of water. And already I did okay. it to half of it. Can you see how that's like yes. way darker and that's lighter? Yes, yes. So just a little bit of water, even though it's dry, the line is already dry. Yes. Okay. Thank was, you. Was pink actually used or was it just lightly touching the red and letting it spread? Um, I just lightly touched my red. So okay. um, is just a little example here. Um, and uh, if anybody needs to to head out, um, you, uh, you are all set. I will not feel um, insulted. I don't want to keep you here. Um, but so with your red, um, I've got a whole bunch of it on my brush right now. And this is just a little scrap piece of paper. Uh, you can see it is quite quite vibrant right there. And if I keep going where there's not as much pigment, it slowly starts to uh, become very, very light. And I can really get a lot of value out of this. I'm just dipping my brush in a little bit of water. Um, you can go all the way until there's nothing left to, I ran out of paper, but quite the, the value scale. So where you were seeing on my paper, it was just that it was so little pigment that it was more on this aspect of it as opposed to this. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, did anybody else have any questions? Uh, we can stop recording if anybody wants to hold theirs up and have me take a peek at it and get some